track this. It's super creepy vibes. Let's go. The Devil's Tramping Ground is allegedly a place where nothing has grown for hundreds of years, and it's where the devil walks in circles on certain nights, thinking of ways to bring evil to the world. And I'm gonna sleep right beside it. Before we begin, I just want to say this video is powered by ASUS. Now let's get into it. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Victoria Rose, and today we're going to do something very spooky. We're going to a place called the Devil's Tramping Ground, which is a haunted area in eastern North Carolina. We're out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where we're at. I've never been out here before. And we're going to actually tent camp. Now I'm not a tent camper, so this is also new for me. And I'm actually really creeped out by tent camping. I usually sleep in my 1998 Jeep Cherokee and travel around with her but I got myself a tent. I'm gonna sleep right near the Devil's Tramping Ground. Now, the Devil's Tramping Ground is a circle where nothing grows, and so apparently if you put something in the middle of it, it gets knocked out of the way or it disappears by morning. I don't believe in this type of stuff, so I'm gonna go out there and do this, but because this is kind of creepy to me just because I don't like tent camping, I do have company with me today. I spent a really nice time in Asheville before coming here. I got a tattoo from Steffi Lee. And I've just been exploring Asheville for the past week on my eastward adventure. So we're gonna stop in here. We're very close. We're just gonna drive down the road a bit and find this haunted place. I'm at this abandoned house right now. There's so many abandoned buildings out here. Let's go. We're on the side of the road, like I said, out in the middle of nowhere. And apparently you cannot drive up to the site. You have to walk there. So I'm going to try, I think this is it. I'm gonna try and walk, cause on like private land. Um, but let's go see if this is actually it or not. I think this is it. This is where we're gonna to camp tonight and figure out this paranormal activity. Is it this? Apparently the happenings happen at nighttime, so it's not just a tramping ground by its looks. So my first impressions, which we always like to do, is it's very underwhelming. This could be anything. We're gonna set something on here and see what happens during the night. So hopefully the haunting will make up for how underwhelming it is. You're not supposed to camp on the circle. We've come a long way to discover the secrets of the devil's tramping ground. So let's set up camp. Now I'm going to go into a bit of detail with the sponsorship. So hang in tight and I'll, I'll set up camp and then meet you right back here. All right, before we get into the Devil's Tramping Ground, I want to show you guys how I find the places that I do, um, some of the apps that I use and how I use Google Maps, things like that. But in order to do that, obviously I have to have internet and secure internet at that because I do travel a lot. And we've talked about this before, having security while traveling and going through all these different places and connecting to a bunch of different internets. So that is where ASUS comes in with the, their RT-AX57 GO Wi-Fi router. So the basics, this is a, a Wi-Fi i6 router up to 3000 megabytes per second wireless speeds and 70 active devices. It's portable, has a small size, very lightweight and mobile features, which sets this apart from other uh, routers. The main thing about this router is that it has a built-in VPN, so you don't need any type of subscription or trials, anything. It's all right in the box. So let's do just a little unboxing. I have already unboxed it and used it. I'm going to show you what it comes with and what it looks like and how small it is. So this is the box that it comes in. We have the Wi-Fi router, which is this. It's very lightweight comes with the cord that plugs right in. 
It even comes with a carrying case, so you can carry everything in this small black velvet bag. And the cord so you can plug it directly into a modem. So with this router, it also could be an extender. It also enables you to connect a lot of other devices. So what I can do here is take the service from my phone and run it through this router. All I have to do is plug my phone in to the router and then I can connect my laptop from the router. Another piece of equipment I got from ASUS, which is very, very handy, is a portable monitor. This thing is also very lightweight and very handy whenever I'm editing, which I do a ton of editing on the road. So let's open this and see what this looks like. It also comes in this nice little sleeve, and like I said, it's very, very lightweight. And this is the monitor. I can set this up anywhere. And you connect it with one cord. One cord is all you need, and you just plug it into your computer. So this is a 15.6 inch full HD portable anti-glare display. It uses a single USB Type-C connection for both power and the video transmission. And it's very sleek and portable. Like I said, it's ideal for the road. It automatically senses orientation and switches between landscape and portrait. Anybody can pretty much figure this out. And it has a 360 kickstand. So let me show you what this looks like and I'll show you how I find the camp spots that I do and the overlanding spots before we continue on with this video. Well, I'm in a random rest stop right now. You can set this thing up anywhere, coffee shop, at home. Um, if you have a battery, you can plug it in to your battery and use it mobily like that. But I'm just gonna show you basically how this works. I'm just gonna plug in my phone, which has tethering on it. Also, there is a switch right here that you can customize. You can use this to turn the v VPN on and off or whatever you want to customize that as. So my number one tip for finding places is to use certain apps. And I'm gonna show you those a little bit later. But another good way is if you're not sure of the area is to obviously use satellite. And some people don't know this, a lot of people probably do. But when you go to Google Maps, you can come over here and I'll show you. So if you look over here, this is how this uh, monitor works, which is really handy for me because I have more screen space because my laptop's very small for portability. Um, editing a video right here, and then over here I can look up whatever, you know, things to do. So basically I was just in Asheville, and you can go to any particular place. Usually you'll, you're gonna want to do national forests. We'll let you do free dispersed camping, places like that. But basically what the satellite map does is you can really zoom way in and you can actually see all the little roads that come off roads. So you can see the terrain before you get stuck, before you go somewhere you're not allowed to go. You can see where the trail ends. It's very helpful when you're overlanding or when you're doing dispersed camping or just exploring in general. So that is a tip that is really handy. Okay. So another tip that I have is the apps that I use. And I'll show you those on the screen here. So the apps that I use are the Dirt, DY dirt and I overlander for like there's so many spaces in the west for dispersed camping and then I, I found a recent new app it's called hip camp and you can find private camp areas on, pri on private land it's kind of like uh, the Airbnb of camping so those are the three apps that I use and I like to use a satellite feature but let's move on with this video and get back to exploring frustrating day today. It seems like everything I'm trying to do, like oh, there's a bunch of little things keeps accumulating. I just lost the shoe for my tripod, the tripod that I've only gotten to use one time and now I can't use it because the shoe's gone. And it's little things like this that has been, that has been happening all day. I am I, very moody today. Hey, let's set up a tent now. The sun is gonna go down soon. And I noticed like with the drone shots and stuff, you can definitely see the clearing a lot better whenever you're up in the sky. I wanna make one thing very clear. I am not a paranormal person. This is not my normal content, but if I ever did, it would be me disproving paranormal activity, if anything, because like I said, I don't really believe in it, but we'll see how this video goes. We're gonna set the tent up right here so the opening faces the hole. But this is my new tent that I got, which I really love. It's super cute. We're gonna have grits and okra for supper. <laughs> Oh, 
now the poles seem like they're the same size. The haunted thing you guys are gonna see today is me losing my coal and becoming the devil. And I will just claw myself back into where I came from. I'm gonna build this and then come back. Like I said, it's a new day, but we're good. We I finally set it up. It did not take that long. It was just that one of the poles was skinnier than the other. So I brought my stove out so we could have some grits. We stopped alongside the road and got some pickled okra, blueberries, and cucumber, and some apple butter. So we're trying nice. Make us all cozy while we wait for the devil. Same as you know, I've never had like really, really good done bags. The best okra I've ever had, and they're very simple ingredients just okra, water, vinegar, salt. Butane is out. So, wait to leave for a second because I need to post something. And while we're gone, it got really, really, really dark. And now we're getting back to the campsite. Hopefully, our tent is still there. I'm checking it out now in a much creepier, creepier environment. Anything in this darkness, but the tent is still there. That's the moon so far. It's super creepy vibes, but um, we're gonna have to do a little experiment. Did you leave it unzipped right there? You didn't? Okay. Oh my god, that is cool. Are you laughing? Is that the devil? I don't know, I can't see anything. Okay, so our experiment, basically, if you put something in the center of the, the devil's hole, that sounds weird, of the, are you laughing or, are you? Anyways, air tag. We're gonna take this air tag and put in this tin and put this in the center, because supposedly it either disappears or it gets thrown off somewhere. So we can track this. See anything. We're going to track that. It's so creepy out here. Let's um, try and sleep. Um, okay, so we are in bed now and we're going to go to sleep and see if our experiment works by morning. Hopefully, it won't be too scary tonight. There are some crazy sounding birds out here. I think I'd feel a little more, way more scared actually if it's just me by myself. But I think the person I'm with is kind of scared too, so I have to soothe them. <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep and I will report anything in the middle of the night if something wakes me up. Good morning. The birds sound very lovely, and there's not a lot to report. I didn't sleep very well, but that's just because it's kind of like very humid, and there's lots of noises in the forest, but nothing crazy. So we're gonna open up the tent and see if our tin stayed on the 
middle of the circle. It's like six in the morning. No hauntings here. Devil didn't come out last night. So, hope that proves something to you. And I went through all the effort for you. So what did we learn today? that Tori is right and you don't need to be scared and maybe I'll go on an adventure that will actually scare me and something will actually happen but I tried to do this because I wanted to show you that you know I'm willing to spend the night at these haunted places but with a right mindset <laughs> and um, there are a lot of like paranormal people and stuff like that and I'm not saying that everything is false because I just don't care enough but from my experience in my whole life I've always kind of just never felt any of that kind of thing. I don't want to crush anybody's dreams and things with paranormal stuff. So the devil didn't come out last night, but we still have plenty of opportunity in life. But we need to head eastward now, like complete east that I've never been. There's territory I've never been in. So this is a, a cool little stop and a little side mission in a way. But we have to move on now. If anything, there's some possessed cow in the distance that's been mooing. That's the scariest thing about everything.